Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to The 51%, a show about women reshaping our world. Coming up, as is the case with many countries, our team in Madagascar report on how cultural shame over menstruation results in the majority of women being held back from achieving true empowerment. Also, the brave Indigenous leader in Colombia is not afraid to take on either oil companies or drug traffickers. And we meet the Kenyan female musician who's marching to the beat of her own drum as she demolishes an African taboo. But we begin in Madagascar, where for women having their monthly period is more than just an inconvenience. As it is for millions of women across the global south, access to toilets, clean water or even disposable sanitary products is a luxury out of reach for many. Our team in Madagascar report on how the battle for menstrual hygiene has serious consequences for both women's education and health. <laughs> Today, Tuvungaz has her period. She lets us film her morning routine. The water she uses, we can't help noticing, is brown. In this arid region of southern Madagascar, it only rains about twice a year. So even this dirty water is a lifeline for Tuvungaz, a mother of three. Her village has no public water infrastructure, so local people built the reservoir to collect rainwater themselves. Before that, Tuvungaz used to have to walk for three hours to find water in a neighbouring village. Tuvungaz heads out to tend to her crops as she does every day. She works slowly and in pain. On top of the pain, Tuvungaz isolates herself out of shame at being dirty. According to Waterraid, an NGO, lack of sanitation brings suffering and humiliation to millions of women around the world every day. <laughs> Sitaka is a scout and very active. She runs an awareness program. Today, with two friends, she's talking about menstruation with passers-by, with varying degrees of success. <laughs> menstruation is still a taboo topic in Madagascar. Even the Malagasy word for it literally translates as the taboo time in the month. But Sitaka is used to it. The scouts have been doing this menstrual hygiene awareness days for 10 years. She perseveres. <laughs> Two fathers from different generations. Back in the south, we meet Tuvungaz's husband at lunchtime. <laughs> In this household, menstruation is considered dirty. Among the Antandrui people, male and female roles are very clearly defined. The Akaniavuk Center is a refuge for some 200 disadvantaged girls. 
They are sent here by court decision, but the state doesn't finance the centre. So in 2015, its director, Lala Sua, found a more cost-efficient approach to feminine hygiene insecurity. Girls here learn to sew their own washable towels. And Lala Sua has even made periods profitable. Making and selling the washable towels has lifted five former residents out of poverty. Felicite is one of them. Today, the sale of sanitary towels covers nearly a third of the center's annual budget. Lalasua says periods are a tool of emancipation and a matter of human dignity. Madagascar has no public policy on feminine hygiene, nor budget allocated to it. But civil society is doing its best to fill the gap. One socially engaged enterprise has pledged to produce a million washable towels for free distribution to disadvantaged women. To Colombia now, where indigenous communities living in the Amazon rainforest are battling to protect their lands from a variety of threats. Our reporters meet one woman leader in the Siona community in the southern region of Putumayo, who's leading the fight against oil companies as well as fending off drug traffickers. <laughs> Liliana Piaguaje fights to protect this indigenous territory from oil activity and violence. The Putumayo region, on the border with Ecuador, is home to the Siona community. Only about 40 families live here today. Many others have moved elsewhere in search of a better life. Those remaining, like Piaguaje, call themselves resistance fighters. In the ambiente, we have our ser. El vientre de nuestros hijos y la vida que está en, en la tierra, que es la que nos da la fortaleza para nosotros seguir en esta lucha de defender el territorio. La lucha consiste en, en defender para que las empresas no entren a nuestro territorio, pues a, a hacer las, las sísmicas, que es lo que más está dando ahorita. A British firm has been exploiting oil in the region for several years. The Siona people say the activity is causing damage to their natural environment. Here, about a four-hour walk from Piaguaje's home, she found sismigel explosive charges, used to carry out seismic studies as part of an oil extraction process. Industry is not the only threat. Putumayo is the third largest coca-producing region in Colombia and as such has been rocked by years of violence. Rebel groups that do not recognize the 2016 peace deal with the government, as well as various drug trafficking cartels, are fighting over control of the area. Piaguaje has repeatedly received death threats. Amenazas de, de todas. De decir que, bueno, si ustedes vienen por acá, pues saldrán con los pies para adelante. To beef up its defense, the community has a brigade of trained youth. Armed with only a baton, they patrol around their territory. According to the UN, 107 human rights defenders were murdered in Colombia last year. Attacks against women increased by 50% compared to 2018. Most of the victims were from indigenous communities. Now to Kenya, where an internationally renowned percussionist is more than shaking things up. Kasiva Matua has set out to break an old African taboo that prevents women from playing traditional drums that are commonly used by men. Challenging traditional gender roles through music. Kasiva Matua is an internationally celebrated percussionist. But getting there has not been easy, because she is a woman playing what is seen in some cultures as a man's instrument. In the context of the African continent, um, it's, it's not just Kenya that has like these types of restrictions. You know, in West Africa, it's 
it's completely taboo for women to play the djembe, you know. Um, I had to go through those hurdles and I think those hurdles were really important to ground me and understand the role that I'm playing in society as a percussionist, as a woman who has decided that I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to do. Finding support in the male-dominated Kenyan music industry was difficult, but Muchua persevered. Coining herself a female percussionist helped her with advertising. International gigs soon followed, as did acclaim, with musicians seeking her out. I request her to play with me because I think she is one with her instrument. I think she has found the perfect marriage between her self-expression um, and her musicality. Wanting to help others and create greater gender equality, Muchua started an all-women's percussionist group. And their Nairobi-based collective has, for the past three years, been giving lessons and mentoring up-and-coming musicians. And that's it for this edition. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.